Good morning. Hello, everyone. Hello. Good to see a lot of people with us today. <laughs> All right. Great. Uh, thank you guys for coming. So today's session is basically we're going to discuss about the art of content creation and how someone can succeed across both platforms, Facebook and Instagram. My name is Moon Baz. I head entertainment partnership uh, for Meta across MENA and Turkey. And I'm Samer Johnny Jamal. I uh, head Instagram strategic partnerships and for Instagram, and I work with celebrities, content creators, and public, and public figures across the region. Okay. So just to get you a bit started, uh, we want creators basically to harness and leverage both Facebook and Instagram, partly to grow your fan base. This is how you can reach a wider audience, expand your business. You can now generate revenues from Facebook. You can generate revenues from Instagram. We're going to discuss about this in a while and have a positive impact. We talk a lot about community, about having uh, uh, groups on Facebook, for example, and have a positive impact. So what does success across both Facebook and Instagram mean? First of all, establishing your presence, your presence across both platforms. We've seen from recent studies that the common followership between both a Facebook and an Instagram account is less than 5%. So being across both platforms is very important because you reach a higher audience. Driving social impact, social good, this is what we've discussed around community. Managing and measuring your content through uh, tools like Creator Studio, Crowdtangle, growing your fan base, reaching uh, uh, a bigger audience across both platforms, expressing your creativity, doing something you love, doing it out of passion, and exploring revenue opportunities. And this is either through branded content deals, sponsorship, or uh, in-stream ads. Cool. So uh, before we start on going more technical, it's very important to touch on how to stay safe and secure on our platforms. So basically what we always encourage and the first thing we say to anyone who's present on Facebook and Instagram is to make sure you have two-factor authentication turned on to kind of limit any third-party uh, uh, access to your account or someone trying to log in from a different device. So basically two-factor authentication prevents these kind of actions and you make sure your account is safe. Make sure, like the obvious, make sure you have a very strong password. Uh, I believe a lot of people like use their birthdays as a password, which is a very, very bad thing to do. So always make a, create a very difficult password that has a caps on, uh, lowercase, a little uh, special characters, and you know, do a combination of things. And always remember your, your password across platforms, store it in a very safe place. Um, the third thing is the assigning the right admins and roles, and this is specifically for Facebook. If you're, if you're a creator that you're managing your account, that's okay, but when the, the bigger you go, you will have like people managing your presence. And this is basically when you have you know, a lot of admins and people accessing the page. Always make sure you give the right access to the right person. You know who's the admin, who's the editorial admin, who's the financial admin to make sure everything is streamlined. Because at any time, if you go into a conflict, let's say your admin is left the company, for example, we don't interfere in the dispute between the creator and the admin. This is something they should resolve off platform, and then whenever the decision they take should be applied to the page. Always, whenever you see any harmful content on people using the platform in a harmful way, we often always advise people to report. We have a lot of reporting tools in apps to report these um, content or users to, and we will take care of, you know, reviewing these requests and taking the right action as per our community guidelines. Always for your comments to make sure you have a positive interactions, make sure to have comment moderation turned on to remove any unwanted terminologies and to make sure it's always pro projecting positive interactions on your posts and always avoid scams and uh, phishing attempts through a lot of security options that are available in Facebook and an Instagram, and we always say that your best friend is always to go and explore your settings, your security and your privacy settings to understand 
how uh, you want your account to be uh, secure and how your privacy is going to be managed. Cool. Some tools available on Facebook and to a certain extent on Instagram, like I'm not gonna go into a lot of details, but always like you can block certain words in comment moderation. If you don't wanna see a specific term, you can always have manual comment moderation turned on and you, you will make sure that this term in specific is not gonna be shown. You can manage your comments, you can block messages, you can moderate live comments. Whenever you go live, you can turn as well comment moderation on to make sure there is like this positivity kind of projected in the line of comments that's, be, that's happening. You can always uh, block people. On Instagram, we have three kinds of punishments for people. If you want like, yeah, we call it punishment because uh, there is the radical punishment is to block someone and this person who is blocked will not be able to search you or find you and thus will not, will not be able to engage with you. Or you can mute or restrict a certain person. Let's, in, in restrict and mute modes, you, that person can still follow you, can still see your content, but you will protect yourself from seeing their interactions or their content. When you mute someone, it's like you're muting a TV channel, for example. You won't be seeing their content, probably because they're so noisy, they're posting a lot. You want to kind of protect the relationship with this person, but you don't want to see their content. When you restrict someone, let's say someone comes every day to your post and kind of I don't know, writes a narrative about, um, or giving their opinion in, an, in a not a very nice way that kind of offends you in a way, so you can restrict them. When you restrict that person, no one will see their comments except themselves, so they will not know they are in a restrict mode. So we want to protect kind of these relationships uh, between you and your followers, and you can always choose who can comment, who can be your friend on Facebook specifically. And on Instagram, there is the private and the public accounts possibly like and for sure creators should have a public account so always go to your settings on facebook and instagram and explore how you want this to mix and match between your security and privacy cool let's talk about telling your story on the platform so basically technically for creators as i said it's always great to have a creator account across both a creator account gives you more functionality, especially on insights, to understand how people are engaging with your content, what's doing better than others, and gives you kind of more insights about what is the best thing for you, for you to do on the platform. If you have a personal account on Facebook and you want to shift to a page, doing that shift will transfer all uh, uh, friendship requests into actual followers. So this is a decision you have to make later on. In order to optimize between, we're talking about how you can leverage and harness the power of both platforms, there is a lot of common tools that you can use across both platforms, and we always say the audience overlap on Facebook and on Instagram is only 5%. So we encourage everyone to have a kind of combined strategy to be present across both platforms. Use like all the content creation services across both, for example, to make it easier we, we, we have cross-posting for stories from Instagram to Facebook to make it easier for you to reach both audiences. You can cross-post videos from Instagram to Facebook. Um, you can always, when, whenever you're gonna have like a live interaction, you can go live on Instagram. You can have watch and, and live as well on, on Facebook and on feed as well. It's very easy to cross-post from Instagram to Facebook, not the other way around. To make it again easier for you not to overwhelm yourself with a lot of thinking about what content should be created for both but always think what should be exclusive to both to keep that platform kind of a place for them to discover and interact with you and all the new content that you're giving how to grow your fan base so always we encourage authenticity um, Authenticity is very important because we always say the audience nowadays is super smart. So if you're trying to pretend to be someone else, people can know that and you will see that actually reflected on your presence on the platform. So always be authentic. Consistency is very important. The continuous presence on the platform kind of gives the algorithm signals about how people are interacting with your content and push it forward to other people in the universe of 2.8 billion people using our platforms every day and always engaging with your fans is a good practice to show them that they're not speaking in a void they you kind of get their comments you respond to them you like their comments for example on on, on instagram 
probably give a super fun uh, response on Facebook. This is always a good practice to show that you are there, you're listening, and you're actually watching what they're talking about. Some creative cons considerations. It's very important to capture attention. With video now, and we're leaning more into video, um, and to, we're taking a more video approach across Facebook and Instagram, the first three seconds are super important. If you lose me as a, as a viewer from the first couple of seconds, I'm not gonna go back to your video. So always captivate your audience in the first couple of seconds. Always designed for signed off. A lot of people are maybe on the move and they don't, they don't have the capability to have sound on, so make your content um, uh, viewable and consumable on a uh, sound off mode. Frame the story, create a storyline, create a certain scenario, give it a cliffhanger in the middle of the video to keep the uh, uh, viewer engaged and to continue watching your video. Always play around uh, uh, more test and mix formats. Now on, across our platforms you have short form, long form videos, you have live, you can always see what would work best for you and always test new formats to see how people are receiving them. And collaboration. Now a lot of creators say that they kind of want to appeal to different audiences, how they can do that. The easiest way is to collaborate with creators maybe from another geographies. This kind of help new audiences discover you, connect with your content and probably transform from a fan probably or a person who just saw your content into a follower. Okay, very quickly on the video best practices. Uh, these are basically the most important things for, for video. Engaging, make sure the video are highly engaged, especially the first couple of seconds, up to one minute, if you want to monetize the video on Facebook, this is where the in-stream ad is served. So make sure that the videos are engaging, they spark meaningful uh, connections between people and, and are relevant, basically. Originality is something very important across Facebook. Make sure all of your videos are 100% original uh, and unique to you. Uh, don't post uh, videos that went viral. You can share these videos. That, that there's, not, uh, there's no issue in that. But don't post any videos that's not 100% yours. Relevancy is also very important, especially now uh, within our days in social uh, media. Things are getting a bit cluttered. You need to be as, as relevant as possible to your audience. Leverage Creator Studio to try to understand what types of videos are working and do more of that. Consistency is also key. Whether you decide to post every day or post three times a week, try to stick to this consistent scheduling of content. This is what the algorithm picks up. This is where your page gets the highest, uh, basically, reach. At the same time, people and users and followers will know what to expect. They will go back to your page and the behavior of them going back to your page, knowing when you will post, will drive the highest reach. And retention. Retention is very important. Uh, one minute views are important if you're monetizing basically, but overall retention, the first uh, three to, to five to ten seconds, we would say, is the most important thing because this is where you capture attention. So very quickly on the revenue opportunities that we currently have, uh, on Facebook we have in-stream ads. To be eligible, uh, you need to definitely pass all the partner monetization policies. You must be in a supported country, have an existing page, and not a profile, um, at least 10,000 followers for now. We might change this in the future, but for now, this is where we're at. And you must have generated 600,000 total minutes viewed from any kind of videos, including lives. This is a scary number, but it's very easy, uh, basically, to, to, to generate. Uh, we are moving towards more lenient uh, uh, monetization policies. You might see some testing starting to happen in the US for a 15 seconds video. At this stage, uh, monetization is available for one minute plus. However, we have seen that for three minute plus, usually the ROIs are much higher.
Uh, Moon, before we continue, uh, let, it's good to mention which countries are monetizable in the Middle East and North Africa. Yeah, so in the Middle East and North Africa, we currently have monetization in the UAE, in Jordan, uh, in Saudi, in Egypt, uh, in Morocco, in Iraq. We have close monetization in Lebanon and in Algeria and more to follow. Okay, in terms of branded content, this is applicable across both Facebook and Instagram. Uh, you can have an off-platform deal with any brand. You can use the branded content handle, so it will appear as in sponsorship with or in partnership with, and you can have your branded content deal. We encourage you to use the branded content handle because it gives more transparency to the users. At the same time, the brands will have access to the analytics of the post and can promote the post even further. Uh, a couple of tips on that. Use your authentic voice because this is what will sell, basically. Try not to fake it. Be authentic. Uh, uh, root for products that you would actually use and that are authentic to you. Optimize your content for mobile. This is not, not just for branded content, for any type of content. So it's all about vertical. Partner with brands who are a natural fit, because this is what will sell, basically. And uh, test and learn to develop best practices, whether it's for a branded content deal, whether it's for any video you post, test and learn, leverage Creator Studio, understand what, what went wrong, what went right, and do more of, of, of the videos that work and leverage your core content strength. If brands are coming to you, it's because of you and your content, so leverage this. And branded content on Instagram is available across all services, in stories, feed, uh, live, uh, reels, and a video. Great, so now, and to the more interesting part, uh, please help me in welcoming Nuseria Sin to the stage. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to introduce you properly. So Nisir is the creator of Nas Daily and Nas Academy. After creating 1,000 videos in 1,000 consecutive days, Nas Daily amassed over 45 million followers in 13 languages. Nas Brand has become one of the largest creators on Facebook. In 2020, he founded Nas Academy, an ad tech platform designed from the ground up for the modern creator. Backed by Lightspeed and others in an 11 million Series A, NAS Academy is on a mission to change the teacher and turn creators into educators. Please, guys, Nusir Yassin. All right, hello, everybody. It's exciting. Look, this is like a family dinner. Yeah. And like literally, I know every single person here, except, except for like people in the back. Hello, people in the back. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. So we're gonna start with the first question, which is basically, how did it all start with you? Like, how did you come up with the videos? What happened, like, in your life that you said, I want to do that? Woo, okay, okay, starting with the hard questions. Uh, well, first of all, again, thank you for having me here. Um, I think there's a lot of peers here, there's a lot of people in the audience that are, um, you know, um, just as impressive, if not more impressive, in their content creation journey. Uh, speaking personally, uh, you know, I was, I was a software engineer, so I was spending all my life looking at code. Uh, I studied economics, I had no interest in media. Uh, actually, the world of media is, is built for white people that are blonde with blue eyes in Hollywood. That is the world of media that I know. But at some point, I was so fed up with the way the world works that I said, I'm just going to go, I'm going to make a Facebook page, and I'm going to say whatever the hell I want to say, and I'm going to scream it and see what happens. And to my surprise, you know, because of the technology you guys were part of building, uh, people listened and people cared and so I, I it, all it took is one person you know one person uh, said I like your videos I, I want to help you make more videos that was that guy was in Nairobi Kenya like a random ass guy from Kenya is like the reason why I got so much energy and so I decided to continue and I made a thousand videos in a thousand days it was three and a half years of torture and uh, 
to my surprise, at some point, Facebook changed the algorithm. You know, I used to average, let's say, 100,000 views per video on day 600. So I made 600 videos, and I was averaging 100,000 views. Now, on Facebook, we all know that's not real 100,000 views, it's three second views. So basically, I was a loser. And uh, at some point, overnight, you guys changed the algorithm to empower creators more. And I woke up at 9 a.m. in South Africa, Johannesburg, South Africa, and my video had a million views. And I was like, oh, that must be a great video. The next day, I made another video. It got a million views. And another video, a million views. Then I made a really terrible video, and it got a million views. And that's when I knew you guys finally changed the algorithms uh, to favor creators like Nas Daily. And ever since then, Nas Daily exploded, and I think that's how I met most of the people here. Okay. okay, so then what would be your advice to emerging creators, especially on how, what are the optimal ways basically to leverage a platform like Facebook? Yeah, so my, my advice is, uh, you know, we'll be honest here, right? We're, we're, we're playing the honest game, uh, being authentic, right? People know when you're faking it. I think there's a supply and demand problem on Facebook. So my hypothesis, and you do not have to confirm or deny it, uh, my hypothesis is that in 2010, all my news feed was my friends. It was my mom, it was my college friends, it was people that I like. At some point, they stopped sharing on the news feed. They went to stories, they went to Instagram. And I'm now I look at my news feed and it's just a bunch of, you know, like news, just news articles. So my hypothesis is that the reason why Facebook is so exciting is because there's a lot of demand for content on the newsfeed, but there's not enough people making videos for the newsfeed, like real, original, powerful videos. That imbalance of supply and demand is why creators should go on Facebook. Uh, so if you make one video now that's like remotely good, you will get a lot of distribution because other platforms may be too busy or they may have found the supply and demand you know, equilibrium. Um, so this is, this is why I think Facebook is a great opportunity. And so that my advice would be, go to a platform that has a lot of demand for content, but not enough supply of content creators. Quality, quality supply. Yes, yes, sorry, exactly. quality, quality supply. Uh, and, and what's your stand on uh, Facebook has no money? Like how did this work for you? <laughs> Uh, well, you know, this Rolex I bought because of my... So actually, the first two years of my uh, Facebook journey, I made no money. Um, you know, it was from my savings. And I think that was a problem because only rich people can become creators. That's ridiculous. Only rich people can be famous. And I think it, it, after two years, Facebook enabled monetization in stream ads. And that has been life-changing for me. Uh, actually, you know, even you guys gave me a minimum revenue guarantee of $2,500 per video, four videos a month, just create. This was in 2018 or 2017. And that guaranteed $10,000 made me believe in Facebook so much that I just doubled my efforts. And now that Nas Daily grew, now we can make more than $10,000 a month. So I would say that you know, our Facebook earnings are roughly, uh, you could say like $1 million a year, something like that. I'm surprised you're mentioning it. Yeah, that. you don't have to. <laughs> no, no, it's okay, it's okay. I nothing, nothing to hide. It's all about being authentic, right? There's nothing, nothing, have, nothing, uh, uh, I, I don't, like, I think probably people in our, in our, uh, like with 30, 40 million followers on Facebook, make a lot more than we do. Uh, we, we don't upload consistently and we're not really good at making super viral videos. Um, but you know, $1 million a year is a lot of money. Yeah, you can change a life. You can build a company. You can change a, a, your, your gen, it's a generational uh, uh, life. Uh, generational, uh, like my kids will be rich yeah. because of Facebook today. Yeah. That's crazy. Um, uh, we spoke about Facebook, but I would like to shift a little bit to Instagram. And if you can shed some light on the evolution you mean the platform that gave me zero revenue? Uh, let's talk about it. 
<laughs> so yeah, if you can shed some light on the evolution of Nas Daily on, on Instagram, and how did you kind of adapt yourself to all the changes and being among, among the first who used like all the new features that we do, especially on the video front with Reels right now? Yeah, so this is, this is what annoys me about Instagram so much, is that I love it so much, yet there is no business benefit from it for me today. So like from Facebook, I, we're making a million a year and there's also brand deals and all that stuff, uh, and it's a great platform. But I find myself checking Instagram 20 times a day. So it is a very addictive uh, platform. So I, I really think the, the story feature, the messaging features, uh, you've built a, a really good uh, product. My, my only, I don't know if this is answering your question, but my, my only gripe with Instagram is that I wish monetization was turned on faster for the rest of the world. Uh, that's my only problem. And this is something we're working on, and we don't want to roll anything out before we make sure it works and it provides creators with enough money for them to succeed on the platform. Okay, speaking like a good segue to the next question, like what do you want us as meta, other than monetization, to bring you like? Uh, to Nas Daily, for example, what features, what other stuff you might ask us? As meta on like the Instagram or Facebook yes. or anything? Instagram and Facebook. Instagram and meta Facebook. products. Meta like the family of <laughs> You can Oculus as well. Um, you know, I think, by the way, uh, my friends from Jelly Smack are here. Hello, Jelly Smack. They're great. They are really big on, you know, helping creators succeed on, on, on Facebook. And I think they've, they've tapped into a problem that exists today with, with many creators, which is uh, it is difficult to grow from zero. It is a monumental task. It took me a hundred videos and a hundred in a hundred days to, you know, uh, when I met Aline, Aline, when I met you day 58, there was 60 videos, 60 days, and I was like 5,000 followers. And imagine working for 60 videos, uh, that's like times 10, that's 600 hours of work to get 5,000 followers on Facebook. So I think the zero to 100,000 is very, very hard for an average creator. So I wish you guys maybe change the algorithm or something to make it easier uh, um, uh, for new creators to, to be thinking. Another thing I wish Face Meta did uh, is I wish, I wish people who have used the system were punished faster. You know, there's, there's quite a few, because like, we're competing with the people who are, we're competing with the people who are copying videos and re-uploading them. We're competing with a clickbait. You know, everybody's competing with everybody. So we're making original content, they're making the clickbait content, and I, sometimes I wish, you know, if it was up to me, if I was a dictator of Facebook, I would like, bam, ban forever, you know? But anyway, you cannot do that because you know you're a company. But yeah, no, we, we we definitely do work on evolving the products and features even more. Um, I think next year you're going to see more uh, incentivization programs to creators. If in-stream doesn't work, it's going to come in in a different form. Um, our strategy is, and you know that very well, like these minimum guarantee deals that we do this is just to show you your potential where we don't license content we're not paying you as as commissioning content it's more for you to be able by yourself super independently to get to these levels even without us so you're definitely going to see more of this next year i'm excited i, I actually do think that for my friends in the audience i think this is the next few years it's going to be the best time in the world to be a creator uh, on Facebook or Instagram or whatever. Very few careers in life allow you to go from zero dollars in revenue to half a million dollars in revenue in a year. You know, the average career path, you need to work at a bank for 10 years to make half a million dollars, maybe. You know, maybe, if you're lucky. Right. Um, what's next for Nas Daily in the coming, on a, on a, on a business level and for Nasir on the personal level? On a personal level, uh, on a personal level, uh, I'm excited. I think, I think people would love to know. <laughs> yeah. uh, on a personal level, I'm excited to stay in a relationship with Aline. Uh, I'm excited to continue that five year and, and going. Uh, and I'm excited to be more fit, uh, you know, uh, and be more shallow, <laughs> and make sure I'm healthy. That's that's the, that's the only two things that I worry about. But on a company level, and that's just as exciting, is I think. 
the world of creators is like 1% there. There's so much that needs to be built for creators in the next 10 years. And a creator is basically anybody that makes something from zero to one. You can be a creator if you make pictures. You can be a creator if you make videos. If you make a company, if you make babies, you're also a creator, you know? So there's a lot of tools that need to be built to help people live on the internet. That's what I do. That's what you guys do. And so we've started NAS Academy. Actually, we're gonna be rebrand to NAS.io. Uh, and we wanna build creator tech. The first thing is NAS Academy, which is we take someone and we help them, convince them to become a teacher. You should teach, you should teach, you should teach. Everybody here should teach. And we make it super easy for people to teach and make money from it and build communities from it. We've got a couple of NAS Academy alumni in the house, I believe. Where did we go? NAS Academy alumni? Oh, there you go, yeah. Um, so I think that's number one. Number two is we think creators need a lot more analytics. They need a lot more uh, localization. They need a lot more uh, features. For example, let me take, give you this story. When I hit 10 million followers, I celebrated with 10 million people on the internet. Then I realized my dad is not one of them. My dad is not one of 10 million people. You know why? Take a guess. He's not on Facebook. He is on Facebook. <laughs> he doesn't speak English. Right. So he doesn't understand my videos. He speaks Arabic, Hebrew, and German. He's like, you know, he gave the middle finger to English. I'm like, great, you know, my dad doesn't understand my videos. And that's when we realize one of the biggest things that creators need is like taking a video in English and helping you make it in Arabic, in Vietnamese, in Bahasa, in Spanish, in Hebrew, it doesn't matter. And so we built that technology, kind of like Google Translate for videos. And now we've built 12 different pages on Facebook and it's just subtitled videos. 2% of the country of Vietnam, 2 million out of 100 million people, follow Nas daily in Vietnamese. And I don't speak a single word of Vietnamese. It's the same content. 1% of the Arab world follows Nas daily uh, in Arabic. And, and I speak Arabic. But, uh, <laughs> but that's the power of localization. So that's an example of things we want to do to empower creators. Yeah, and I think this is providing a lot, uh, um, a good like a lead by example to a lot of other like big creators to localize their content. I think we're done uh, with this, but I have prepared a couple of fire like questions okay. for people in the room to know you more on probably. Get ready. The... You need to answer very quickly. Yes, very, very quickly. quickly. Okay, sorry. All right. The first question. Uh, something related about us. Um, what is the Instagram feature you cannot live without? Quickly. Direct messaging. All right. Your most used emoji. Uh, like, you know, like this. Uh, thank you. All right. Uh, what's the first word that comes to your mind when I say collaboration? Overhyped. UAE. Amazing. Nas Daily. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. I, 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 no, nobody, um... Wow. You said wow. Yeah. Wow. Magical. <laughs> okay. Um, are you an introvert or an extrovert? <laughs> I will not answer that question because it's very obvious. <laughs> All right. And the last question, who's the content creator that inspires you? Regionally, globally, whatever. Casey Neistat, Johnny Harris are the two creators that I uh, really admire. Amazing. Uh, thank you so much. It was amazing to have you with us today, Nas. Um, yeah, let's Would open we, it up. Yeah, let's open it for Anyone all these questions. Any questions. Anyone has any question to Nasir? No? No? Right there, right there. Aline's team. Can we get the mic? Yeah. Hello. Oh, uh, so my question... First of all, introduce yourself. Yes, then. please. Hi everyone, my name is uh, Upton. I am a content creator making videos about tech, money, and cultures. And uh, I'm personally very grateful for Nusair because uh, about a year and two months ago, he called me from the Maldives where he was with Aline and uh, encouraged me to get into content creation and doing it on my own. And so I just uh, hit about 600,000 followers across the platform. And, uh, and I'm also very grateful to Facebook for, for monetization. So what Nusair was saying really resonated with me about 
you know, really having to work hard. Um, I was actually ready to give up posting on Facebook because it was quite demoralizing after about seven, eight months, you know, getting 300, 400 views. Um, but I'm so glad I didn't because I, I was able to turn on monetization about five months ago and, and replace my previous salary at a corporate job um, within just a, a couple weeks on Facebook. So, but anyways, my question is actually about kind of the way we're seeing some content creation going, which is that relatable amateurness um, where you have, you know, and I've seen this myself where shooting in selfie mode will actually get a lot more views than a nice DSLR, perfect lighting, things like that. So I wanted to know if you could talk a little bit about that and then especially that resonates well on TikTok, but what about on Facebook? Yeah, that's a great question. The shittier the video looks, the more it gets views. It's kind of it's counterintuitive, but it seems like humans, the average person on Facebook, scrolling Facebook on their, on their bed, they don't care about your color correction. They don't care about your Alexa, your red camera. They don't, they don't give a damn. Now, it kind of annoys me a little bit because I, I have like a $4,000 camera. It's not a million dollar camera, but it's a $4,000 camera and we invest a lot of effort into like nice productions. Uh, but you see people with their phone making videos and they get more views than us. So as someone now on the other side, as a, I'm professional now and the amateurs are competing with me, I'm a little bit jealous. But I really do think that I would not put it past me that in the next two years, maybe one year, I'll just be making videos with this. Uh, and I'll just like ditch the cameras and keep them at the studios. Uh, so uh, it's, it's also a crazy idea that you can buy a thousand dollar, a five hundred dollar device and if you do use it well, you can make five hundred thousand dollars from it in a year. The future is ridiculous. Yeah, I would say there's room for all kinds of quality sure. video, but relevancy is the most important. If your video is relevant, it is capturing, is engaging, whether you film it from a, a high-tech camera or your phone, it's, it's going to go viral. Yeah, and the first three seconds are very important. <laughs> Hi, uh, this is Paulina. I'm from Berlin Retreat. <laughs> I graduate from Mexico. I just wanted to know, like, I'm a Spanish teacher, and I just wanted to know if you have plans in the future to reach to the Spanish market, which is huge also, like having courses for content creators in Spanish and all that. Yeah, so we localize our content to Spanish. So I think we have two million followers in Spanish, mostly from Mexico. Uh, it, is, it, is, it is a huge, huge market for us. Uh, I think the way we want to build NAS Academy is the same way we're building NAS Daily. So get to 10 million followers in English, then localize. So we want to build NASAcademy.com, and then we're building NASAcademy.in for India, NASAcademy.mx for Mexico. So localized marketplaces for creators to become educators. Because at the end of the day, even though we think creators are very global, they're actually very local. You're only famous in your city. You're only famous in your country. That's why half of you cannot recognize half the creators from the Middle East, because they're only popular in the Arab world. Um, and so that's, that's something to keep in mind as you create content. Other questions? Hi, uh, my name is uh, Munir. I'm a NAS Academy alumni as well. Uh, so I wanted to ask you something. When you were on your journey, when did you start going from a solo content creator to building a team? And, and, and what was that journey like? Was it to help you with videos or was it to build your company? Just uh, the expansion, please. Yeah, yeah, no, thank you for this. Uh, so, so, that, so that's actually something I think Facebook and, and, and Meta in general could help provide is that a creator with enough time needs to become a business. So they need support in taxation, support in hiring, in labor laws, in, 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 in uh, distributing funds, uh, sharing revenue, all that stuff. I think these are really incredible tools. So personally, it took me exactly 750 days to hire someone. When I maximized my life and my girlfriend's life, uh, only then did we realize we need help. The first help a creator needs is editing. Do not spend five hours on a piece of video every single day. That's 20% that's of your life on Final Cut Pro or Premiere Pro. That's crazy. 
So, so don't edit. So at 7.50, I got an editor and I focus on script writing and traveling. Then the next thing you need as a creator is a personal assistant slash project manager. You should not be responding to brand deal emails. You should not be responding to uh, putting things on the calendars. Like you need to free your brain for content creation. Uh, third thing you should do is you know stop being materialistic. Like this is why I only have the same you know type of T-shirt. Uh, you should free your life from material objects and only focus on content creation because it's so 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 hard uh, to do it for multiple years. So these are the three, the three things I advise every content creator to make. You can get an editor, by the way, last thing. You can get an editor for like a thousand bucks a month. You don't need to hire somebody in Abu Dhabi or in Los Angeles for like 100K a year and, and, and union and all that. You don't hire in Los Angeles. That's all I'm saying, no offense to anybody. <laughs> um, the, my, the biggest, one of the most talented editors for Nas Daily is a 19-year-old girl in the Philippines, not in the capital, in a small island in the Philippines, literally with less than 100,000 population. She edits. Wow. <laughs> she edits our videos. And she makes, I don't know, a thousand bucks or something a month, which is more than her parents combined. And that's, that's it. That's all you need. That's amazing. And Thank you for the three pieces of advice. If I will become a content creator in the future, I will use that <laughs> for these three, three things. Uh, any other questions? Uh, one for us. For you guys. Uh, I'm Peter, I'm Lebanese, and I don't know if you know, but the crisis there is really bad, and Everyone is trying to have jobs outside and I have a lot of friends who are creators and I even tell a lot of creators outside of Lebanon to come but they would tell me no because monetization would be off. So I just want to know why because it's a really big issue and I think it would help a lot of people because if creators outside of Lebanon come, our tourism board would be so much better, people would come, it's our only solution. So as a Lebanese I'm just asking how and why? Like, is it gonna turn on any any soon? Thank you. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna answer this. I'm I'm Lebanese as well. <laughs> uh, monetization is launched in Lebanon, but it's a closed launch, so very restricted to managed partners, just because of regulatory issues, basically. So we're trying to streamline those to be able to have an open launch. We're hoping by next year we'll be able to open monetization to everyone. Any, yeah, I can see this. I have yeah. a question for the Facebook oh. and Instagram people. Um, do you avoid that? <laughs> Introduce yourself, who are you? I know a lot about you. Um, <laughs> Hi, my name is Aline. I'm a content creator. I lost my voice. I don't sound like this normally. Um, I'm a content creator on Facebook. A few million there. I do a little bit of Instagram and, uh, you know, fiddle around with YouTube and TikTok. So my question is, and I'm based here in Dubai, a lot of, you know, content creators have only started creating like in the last 10 years. This wasn't a job before that. So there's no really like long-term plan that exists. There's no you know, how do you keep up something that's so draining for many, many, many years? Um, so I know you guys were asking for suggestions for products. I was wondering if there's any conversations or things around how creators can keep going when they're doing something that's not sustainable <laughs> for like a normal human. So I was curious if there's conversations happening at the platforms or because I think it's a really cool thing that there's actually space for companies and things to create a support system or some kind of plan. Because not everyone can create like a massive team and even I live with Messiah. Even that is very, uh, he's, he's like, it's, it's a lot of work also. So yeah, sustainability, long term. Yeah, that, that's a very good question. Actually, we are aware of that. We know that there's a lot of creators who are burnt out uh you will see in the coming years starting next year we're gonna have more incentivization programs for creators so we want creators to make money we want creators to turn uh, 
this into their business, into a sustainable, uh, sustainable revenue stream for them. So there's a lot of things that are in, uh, in testing now. We're not talking about just making in-stream ads more, um, how do you say, like, make more people eligible, make it easier for people to generate in-stream ads. On top of that, there's a lot of programs that we will be launching basically to cater for creators, to make their lives easier and, and, and have them uh, look at Facebook and Instagram as a more sustainable uh, business or future. I, I, can, I can also try to help answer that. In the past, if you make a Facebook video, and you guys know this very well, it gets two million views in the first day, makes $2,000, then but in 24 hours, it dies. The shelf life of a video on Facebook was literally two days for the last four years. I think, and I think this has happened maybe in the past month or it will happen in the next year, nobody knows. But in the next year, a video you make today will make revenue for you for the next three years. I made $500 in revenue in the last week from a video I made a year and a half ago, right? So that's, I think that's what sustainability means is you're not a hamster wheel in which if you stop for a month, your revenue just disappears. I think they're working, I would bet that you're working on that same problem and fixing it for once and for all. We are. Oh, great. And, and, and like another thing to add is we always encourage or, or tell creators like, think of topics that you love that you're passionate about because this gives you more sustainability and it gives you more ideas to continue on a longer term. Don't restrict yourself to topics that are so niche that you might like run out of ideas in, the, in, in a month or two. This sustainability leaves you doing more things you love and exploring and expanding your passion and going mainly diversing into other, 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 other topics that are still related to, the, to, to your passion for you to continue like the, the journey with us on, on a long term. And focus on the schedule that works. It doesn't have to be one video per day. Just focus on the schedule that works for you that works with your own personal life and stick to it. And build um, a, a connected community about the content. Like, make sure you build uh, this community based on, on, on similar interests, people who should stay around and stick around with you in the ups and downs to support you, to like open this two-way conversation with them and always kind of get inspired. What, they, what do they want to see more? from you so this gives you a lot of new ideas and this is generally to all creators that's why we always encourage having a, the, like giving voice to their followers and this is why again we said we tell them for example go live from a time to time to answer questions and you would get a lot of ideas from your followers from around the world thank you so much you guys so much. for attending Lucere thank you so much for being here thank you everybody for your time really thank appreciate you. it thank you guys so much thank you yeah.